Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live. So my name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by these two fine gentlemen, Mr. Aaron the Voice now Say what's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai the Legend Fergan, say what's up, Kahai? What's up? So how we do things here is we like to answer any and all of your questions. So we usually get uh, a bunch of questions throughout the week and we like to address them here on Thursday Live Lessons. So it can be anything. It can be um, if you guys are working on something, you guys want, um, you know, want us to uh, to comment on anything that you guys have been doing. If you need some advice and some stuff, that's usually what, uh, what, what we like to do here on Thursday Live Lessons. You can, you can send us questions via email. You can give us videos of your progress and stuff. Or we are live, so you guys can just chat along live with us and ask us your question live. Um, if not, then we just kind of talk story. Usually we try to you know keep it to this to the ukulele subject, but sometimes we, uh, we go off the rails and just talk about whatever it is that we want. Just like today, Kahai, I went to um, Chloe Fish Market. It's <laughs> it's like in a new location. It's it's super fancy. I just know Kolo <laughs> Fish Market to be is like like shack, you know, like right next to uh to to the the video store, the old video store. Yeah. And now they're like super duper fancy with like a parking Ooh. lot and like, <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I never had to park in, in an actual Kolo Fish Market parking lot. Cause usually I'd park like at the uh across the street at the post office and then I'd walk to Kolo Fish Market from there, but. They had their own dedicated parking lot. I was like, fancy these guys. I, <laughs> I had a, a similar experience with like uh, the number one in Kafa. And I told my mom or we, oh, yeah. she she brought me there to pick up food. And I ran into the store, grabbed her food. But while I was in there, I was like, oh, this is a new place. This mm. is pretty nice. See? They made it pretty nice. <laughs> I told my mom Spacious. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or it's like, ooh, yeah. and it's, ooh, they, they upgraded. I told my mom that, and then she's like, oh, really? And she went to pick up food, and she's like, it's not that nice. It's still number one. <laughs> it's not it's not that good. I was like, oh, I hyped it up too much. What was she sorry. expecting? Like, yeah. I was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. It's, she was expecting a one. Panda Express over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, They're still uh, number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're still Ichiban, Kai. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not number two, number right one. Right on. So, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of cool, like um, how, you know, how things kind of change. And, and I heard that Cola Fish Market has been has been like that for a while. I just haven't been there in a long time. And um, uh, yeah, good, good times. I got myself, you know, some nice wasabi poke, best on the island. If you guys ever come down to Kauai. After the pandemic, please, you know, if you guys ever come down, uh, you guys can go to Kloa Fish Market and, and get the wasabi poke. Kloa Fish Market has been there since I don't God knows how long. I mean, it was there when I was, you know, when I first moved here back in 92. So I'm guessing it's it's been there a while now. Yeah. But uh, people yeah, who came to, for the ukulele underground retreat. We're mm -hmm. lucky because we cater or we kind of we just ordered yeah. from Kaloa Fish Market one of the days. Yeah. So for for lunch. So yeah. Nice. <laughs> see, see, it, it is ukulele on the ground related. <laughs> <laughs> We're not just talking whatever. It's all trying good. to tie it in any yeah, exactly, way possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I I talked about it because I'm just like Matt. I just I just finished off this entire plate. So if I feel at all a little bit sleepy during this podcast. You'll know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right on. So, first order of business, Kaha, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. Well, um, talking about uh the retreat and stuff, mm. we actually yeah. got. So last week when we set the challenge, mm -hmm. we actually got mm -hmm. a suggestion from somebody, but it came in through the email, so we didn't see it uh during the okay. when we were setting the challenge sure. but i thought it was a great mm -hmm. suggestion so I, I wanted to bring it up and then i also wanted to we didn't set the date the due dates for when the challenges are due or the submissions for the challenges mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i figured mm -hmm. uh maybe we can do that real quick at the beginning uh so the suggestion okay. was it was from uh james i don't know if you remember james from the retreat uh and he said mm -hmm. in honor of shark week why don't we do a shark theme song so uh, Ooh, I thought, Daddy uh, Shark, yeah, <laughs> like Daddy Shark and Mommy Shark. <laughs> I th I figured we could add that just to our list of bonuses. Like if oh. people want to take that suggestion, they can run with that too. So yeah, okay, we can add that <laughs> on. Add add sharks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. What, what was he? Shark goes into a diner at the end of summer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Summer diner. Oh. Is a uh, is Jaws oh, man, at the end of summer? 
I yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Because there's like a bunch of people out and the mayor is like, no, it's fine. Everybody <laughs> can still go in. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. The, re- <laughs> <laughs> the real villain of the story, right, is the mayor, <laughs> not the, the shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's not dangerous at all. You, yeah. you guys can just go ahead and go keep swimming. Keep swimming. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> but anyway. So... <laughs> uh, yeah, questions about ukulele. Hi, do we have any ukulele oh. related questions? So that was cool. That's a cool suggestion. You guys can write about sharks if you want to write about sharks. Uh, should we set the date, though, for when the the song challenge is due? Um, should be. Should be next week, right? For, for us, us. And, and then and like then... two weeks for uh, yeah. So next week for us, two weeks for um, our audience. So okay. Next week we'll show you guys what we came up with. It'll give you guys some ideas and what you guys can uh, use for uh, for your songs. And then um, just write a song, and uh, we'll take all the submissions and we'll randomly pick somebody and we'll give something away. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, what was the other guidelines? So now we have sharks. We have diner. We have end of summer, and I uh, believe uh, there was key like modulation. a something. Key modulation. Oh, yeah, a modulation. So it could be in any key, but it just has to modulate up or down. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a uh, um, major two. That was yeah. a major two. Part yeah, of yeah, yeah. A progression. It's like one major two, four, five, or four one, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah. As long as major two, like right there. That's right. That's a good one. It's a good one. All right. So, uh, is there any other questions? Uh, right before we started, we got a question from Kenneth, and he's in the chat. Uh, so okay. Kenneth said, "I mm-hmm. book a lesson less than once a month because I don't know where yeah. I'm getting to on the ukulele and don't know what to even ask. Mm-hmm. I feel I am at the end of beginner mm-hmm. and would like to get across to inter- into intermediate player. I think my coordination of left hand, right hand." Changing chords and singing just doesn't coordinate at all. Are there other students like me, mm-hmm. and uh, what suggestions do you, would you have? Um, you know, like uh, it's 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 tough to say. I I mean, you know, it's it's tough to say where like beginner ends and uh, and your in, in intermediate starts. You know what I mean? Like I know um, I I don't think singing has anything to do you know with uh with if you're a beginner or you're intermediate you know like because you could be a total beginner you know like playing for the very first time even like first day and some people can kind of like you know play some chords and sing but that person you know who can sing and play chords might not be able to play the b flat chord whereas somebody who doesn't sing you know could play the b flat and the e or whatever chord and that person could still be a beginner you know what i mean like it's there's it's very subjective so i wouldn't you know i wouldn't use the measurement of being able to sing as you know as a you know as part of um either if you're a beginner or an intermediate player so that's kind of what what i would say but with that said um the private lessons are basically for you so it doesn't really matter you know in the end if you're a beginner or you're an intermediate i can help out either way you know i um i've helped out people like ranging you know all sorts of uh uh all sorts of playing styles and all sorts of levels and stuff so you know you can make use of it i usually tell people to book a private lesson every other week since you can book two you know two times a month um and there's four weeks you know to uh to to the month so you can kind of you know stagger them uh, stagger them around so I can kind of check back in with you if you're into singing if you can do that stuff and um, I'll say this advice again because this is kind of my best advice um, take the song lessons uh, song list that we have with, with a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of the song lessons and the play alongs pick two or three of those every week um, work on that and then at the end of the week whatever you didn't finish whatever you didn't learn just put on the back burner the new week starts pick another two or three songs you know you learn those uh learn those songs as much as possible because the thing is if you just want to make small progressions you know and you're using the play along to uh to kind of help you out with it as well so if you're if you learn one new chord that week you're one new chord better than you were you know than you were last week if you learn one new um strum thing rhythm thing picking thing you're that much better than you were last week so as long as you're learning something new um i just really don't like it when people you know kind of tell me 
that they've been working on a song for like five six months and i just feel that it's a huge waste of time you know like because um for those people who've been working on something for that long and, and not getting it, it's kind of like hitting the same wall every time, you know, with, with a car. Like you want to just like either go around it or, or find a, you know, find another place to go. So that's kind of the whole point with this week by week kind of thing that like if you're, you know, you might not have the right muscle memory. You might not have the right uh, technique to do whatever you know you're you're trying to do for the past five six months, and that's why you're not progressing. So if you're trying to take it week by week, something new every time, and you know you're uh, you also have the encouragement of you don't have to finish the song because a lot of people feel like they gotta finish it. They're like, oh, I can't get this part down, and they keep trying and they keep wasting time because you know they're just like really trying to do it but you know it's they're not um progressing because the muscle memory is just not there so if i check in with you every other week i can be like well what did you you know what songs did you pick can you play them for me and then i can kind of check in then i'll be like okay cool rhythm was great this was this you know the picking was that um the chords was was this you know i can comment on all those things so there's always something for me to check up on if you do that regimen and uh, at the end of the month because you know so you've been doing if there's four weeks in that month You've been doing this, um, you know, this two or three songs a week. At the end of the month, uh, new week, you pick your two or three songs. You pick one or two songs from last month that you didn't finish. Because, um, you know, that's basically going to be your, uh, your ruler or your measuring stick to see how much you've progressed throughout the month. So if you're, you know, you're choosing your two or three new ones and then one or two, and if you still can't do it, fine, that's, that's, you know, that's totally okay. But at least you're seeing if you, you know, um, if, if you can do it, then you're just keep checking yourself the next week after that, two or three new songs, one or two again from last month, two or three new songs, one or two again from last month, you keep kind of checking yourself new month, you know, one or uh, two or three new songs to kind of learn one or two from the past couple months and that's it it's just kind of like learning new stuff checking in with uh you know with with your progress on um uh, you know on whatever you played uh, a couple months back and just not obsessing with like kind of learning or mastering the one song it's just about getting as much in and at the same time you know you're uh you have a lot of a lot of songs under your belt because you're you know you're expanding your repertoire you're you know um you're learning new things you're learning new cores you're learning new picking patterns you're learning new strums and stuff like if you're using you know the the uh, uh the lessons with the play along and the play along you know can kind of teach you groove it can teach you timing and all that you know and all that stuff so with that said you know if you do that regimen and you check in every uh every other week you know using your two credits every month i feel that's you know that's enough to get you where you want to be if you want to, uh, and it doesn't matter if you're picking a, a beginner song or an advanced song or whatever, you know, with your two or three songs, the point is to learn as much as possible. So you do kind of want to pick a, a song that's out of your, you know, out of your reach and then one or two songs that you, you know, you could possibly learn. But if you're challenging yourself every week, that should, you know, that should be good, regardless if you're a beginner or an intermediate. So if you're looking for, you know, some uh, something to do or some way to get better or to cross that threshold from beginner to intermediate, this is what I highly, highly, highly suggest you do. And um, and at the same time, if you come across something in the, you know, in the lesson videos that you don't know, there's always a video on that on Ukulele Underground. You know, like if uh, if for some reason you pick Europa and you're like, oh, what's this with the D minor solo? What's going on with that? Bam, solo secrets revealed. That branches off to, you know, to uh, watching that. Or like, oh, what's this kind of tremolo thing that I'm supposed to do? Bam, you check out like Uke Minutes. There's all these or check out Ukulele 102 or 101. There's always something on the site that will explain something it, the, the things in the songs that that we teach so using the uh, you know using the songs because we have tons i think we have i don't know almost 200 songs at this point how many songs do we have aaron no we have over 200 i'm not too sure <laughs> <laughs> we have two, yeah. over we have 200. 200 songs see yeah we have over 200 and i think we're huh? close to 250 if not past 250 already dang you know what i mean so like it there's no shortage of songs for you to choose from and um and if you do that for you know for a year so 12 times three you know you know like 36 songs um it's you're learning a bunch and you're adding to your repertoire and you're not like just focusing on one or two for five months or six months you know you're constantly learning something new 
you're uh, you know you're learning new tunes you can play it for your friends you can play it with your friends if you want to you can start your own youtube channel instagram tiktok whatever you know like and that's how you know that's how you uh, you progress that's how you get better but by just kind of challenging yourself every week to learn something new so even though you know it um or you know the chords or you know the whatever just learn the song then you you know you took whatever chords you you know you knew you put it together and uh, and you learn this this new tune so you're adding something you know to your uh, to your tool belts of songs to play you know and uh that's really my best advice um people ask me all the time like i'm so lost in the site like there's so much stuff there's so much content like where do i go what do i do that is what you do because that leads to all the you know all the videos on the site if you learn just those you know those monthly songs um check in with me in private lessons uh, eventually you'll run into something that you don't quite know yet. And we have a video for that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? Sorry. That was a long winded explanation. No, mm -hmm. uh, kind of yeah. going into, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you can go. No. Uh, so kind of going, going into, uh, what he was talking about his left hand and right hand coordinating, mm -hmm. um, some kind of, uh, I, I guess things that you can do to help, um, coordinate your right hand and your left hand a lot of times the chord changes are on one mm -hmm. so if you just kind of hold your ukulele and then just kind of mute mute your left hand part mm -hmm. one two three four and like on the end is a up mm -hmm. and then down is a one so mm -hmm. so just kind of let go of your hand yeah. on the up and then down so one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Because everything kind of stems from that. So if you can, if you can kind of get that motion down, then you can start doing it with chords too. So like one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So um, so yeah, so just that will help coordinate you know um mm. and that will get you through 90 percent of your <laughs> chord changes like because most <laughs> yeah. of the time it's always on the one you're, yeah. you're gonna change from so if it's like a c to or a g to a c so one two three four and one two three four and one two three you're, you're doing all the same things and then all of the strumming stems from that that one two so like you're gonna do that your down up so like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so if you just practice that then um that will set you up for all of the more advanced kind of strumming that you'll encounter later and then um and then later on you can progress from there switching on different beats so sometimes it's the two or sometimes it's the three so you can start practicing that but a lot of it is just like you have to do it consciously at first and then when you do it enough it becomes unconscious and then you don't have to think about it so so yeah just keep practicing that getting it really like set where the and is letting go and then down on the one mm. is putting the chord down and putting this this hand down for the down strum and so if you were to do that just really syncing those things together and practice that over and over till you don't have to think about it as much then you can add your singing and then like then you can add the more complicated strums or stuff mm. like that so it so yeah that's uh, for a beginner kind of trying to transition to an intermediate or beginner trying to work on on his base mm -hmm. I would say that would be like like really good practice um, and then that way once you get to the point where you don't have to think about it then everything com comes easier you know like you yeah. start learning things a lot easier because you don't have to think about it I think you should do the um, do that practice with the, the eighth notes instead of the quarter notes because it's like very rare that mm -hmm. you actually encounter songs where, I mean, if you play songs where it's just quarter notes, 
that's kind of like the that's like our songs made easy or anybody else who is like oh this is how you can make the song super easy and they're really simplifying it for you (laughs) but it doesn't sound like very musical you know like that's not what music like probably that's not the music that you listen to and you're like oh i really want to play that that sounds so catchy or that sounds like so much fun to play Mm -hmm. they're probably using eighth notes at least or like even 16th notes so i think it's better to just like start practicing already with the down up down up down up down up all the time and and i think like aaron Mm -hmm. said like uh i think it's a practice um i would say uh this is weird. I'm, I'm going to tell a story. When I was, um, I don't know, it was like less than 10, must have been, one of my teeth was crooked. And so to fix it, they told me to stick a popsicle in my mouth and push against the tooth, right? Like add pressure to it and then it would realign. <laughs> and to do that, they said, oh, just do it while you're watching TV. You know, stick it in, push it against your tooth and then watch like uh you know watch a cartoon for 30 minutes or something or watch something and you really want the like this type of practice you want it to be something that i would say is like tv practice or you you can watch or listen to something else and you're not really focusing on what your hands are doing you're focusing on like watching whatever is going on or listening to whatever is going on and that's where it's like you're you know you're thinking or you're like oh yeah but your hands are still moving the whole time where you're you're still practicing and i think if you do that, like, oh, you, you'll get faster, like, so much, or you'll see improvement so much faster, I think, because you're you're incorporating it into things that it's not like you sit down and it's like, okay, now it's time for ukulele. It's like you're just doing it every time you can get a chance. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's the... hmm? I, 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 I kind of wanted to come back to, to the um, thing, too, where uh, you're talking about don't spend so much time on one song, right? And I, I yeah. think like when you say that, it's like it doesn't mean that you have to forever quit that song. Like you'll you're like I'm never playing <laughs> this song ever again, yeah. and I'm never coming back, right? Because I I know I have songs that I've been working on for years, and I still don't feel like mm-hmm. I've totally gotten it. And uh, what was that song yeah. from um, Crossroads that you said like that you? still try to figure out or you oh, still try to... eugene's trick bag yeah or are you talking about um uh paganini well like either right like those are songs that <laughs> would, would you say that you have those down or you, you you know like oh no 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 it's a lifelong project i don't want to want to fulfill my lifelong project yet what, what, what would i live for after that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> And, and I think jumping to those songs, I mean, I don't want to discourage people like mm-hmm. when people jump into Europa or body surfing or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's fine. You can do that. Mm-hmm. But think about it. If you're yeah. like if you're somebody who I am, I, I'm a terrible person to give this advice to because I don't lift weights at all. Right. But I think the analogy will get mm-hmm. across is like if think about it, if you're somebody who has never lifted weights, you know, at all, you're not physically fit or whatever and you go i'm gonna deadlift mm-hmm. 200 pounds i think i can do that and you go and you try to deadlift that mm-hmm. it's like that's not happening right you, you're <laughs> not gonna do that no. and <laughs> people trainers are yeah. if you ask people how they're how to get to you know that heavy weight they're gonna tell you like oh go with 25 pounds go with 30 pounds go with 40 pounds you know you build up and up and up till you get to that that you know super heavy weight and the same thing with songs too. It's like mm-hmm. you build up your catalog of songs, build like build up your as much, um, kind of grab as much songs as you can because that all of that just improves your overall playing. You know, none of it is gonna make you a worse yeah. player for learning it. So why not just like grab as much as you can? I think like for Aaron, right? Mm-hmm. It's like um, uh, Aaron is like a marathon runner, and if somebody w- if if you had to run a marathon when you weren't training, Aaron, what do you think like it would be? Could you do that? Like the first time you ever wanted to run a marathon, if you just thought I'm going to run a marathon next week without any prior <laughs> training, anything, you know, to work up with it. Do you think you could could have done that or just like, yeah, I can do that. I, it'll be fine. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the the things that you figure out along the way that really help you um 
eventually do it so yeah, yeah. so you you're gonna attempt things at first and then you know all the things that you learn by attempting and so like supposedly failing you know there's no mm -hmm. real failure it, especially in mm -hmm. music you know you just try mm -hmm. try things and then see what works for you mm -hmm. and then take and remember the things and then forget them and then remember them again you know yeah so so it's yeah it's totally fine and then your progression will lead you to wherever you want to go mm -hmm. but as long as you keep at it yeah. yeah that's why part of the uh you know part of the advice is kind of revisiting songs that you didn't finish like just because you mm -hmm. didn't finish it doesn't necessarily mean that like okay well it's just time to move on to like a bunch of stuff like you know you revisit stuff from like the you know the past month and they and then see how much you know how much better you've gotten so if you're working on a song it's best to like work on it but then work on other stuff at the same time and then take a break from it and then come back and you know see if you can uh, tackle it because uh like i said you might not you know possess the right muscle memory you might not have the right mm -hmm. technique or you know just even the right approach to you know to uh to that song so by just kind of taking you know taking some time off and learning a you know a bunch of things maybe those things will apply to uh you know to the song that you're you're having a hard time with and that's why you should you know take a break and come back um to add to that uh, for those of you folks who are like intermediate to advanced players and like oh i don't need to do the you know do the uh lessons and stuff like you know don't uh yeah don't sleep on the lessons because the lessons have got some great like advanced stuff you know in it like that any advanced player could uh, you know could benefit from and if you're an advanced player and you know you know you know all that stuff uh the play alongs are there and the play alongs you know we have basically the whole song is kind of played out. So if you're an advanced player and you want to work on, um, you know, on improvisation, that's the time to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, press play on the play along and see if you can improvise, you know, on those songs and find the pockets where the improvisation makes sense or just improvise through, you know, through the whole song. That's kind of how, you know, that's how I did it. And another, uh, another thing that I want to add to that is if you're an advanced, intermediate to advanced player, we have uh, UU plus solos that you can do the same approach to, you know, like um, be two or th uh, two or three of the monthly lessons in one, you know, uh, in one UU plus solo. Like that's something that you can add to that regimen next week that, you know, do the same thing. So there's always something, you know, to learn. And um, and I feel like if you're stuck, you know, in a or you're you know you've hit a wall or something and you don't quite know how to progress, it's just, you know, you're not um you're not willing to try something new uh, is yeah. what it seems, you know, what it seems like is if you try something new, if you learn a new song, if you try to approach a, you know, a new tune, you'll definitely learn something new, you'll get better. And then, you know, like if you take a break from whatever's frustrating you and then, uh, and you go, you go back to it after, you know, after some time, maybe, you know, you will progress and, 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 uh, and just get better that way. I feel like a lot of people just get kind of discouraged because they're not moving forward, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're not, you know, that you you know you're not good enough or you're not making any any kind of progress um but if you can make progress somewhere else and then come back to it and then you'll see some progress on you know on that song really that's that's what it is so regardless if you're a beginner intermediate or advanced there's always something you know for you to kind of tackle because like myself i consider myself as as an advanced player but i keep challenging myself to new things and that's kind of how i you know um, how I stay sharp, like, because I, you know, in order for me to confidently tell you guys what to do with your ukuleles, I need to, you know, like, I need to kind of know what I'm doing as well. So just rest assured that I'm keeping this, uh, this blade sharp, Kahai. My, <laughs> my sword is, is always ready to cut down any bamboo, baby. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think that's like actually one of the biggest hurdles that we see students have to get over is, it mm. it's gonna sound bad and it's gonna it might you know make people feel insulted but one of the biggest mm. hurdles is to, to get over is your own ego like how well you yeah. think you you know yeah. something yeah because yeah. I, I saw a video once about a guitar player is a mm. more about guitar but he said like mm. don't sleep on like you know songs that you think are beginner songs or don't sleep on simple songs mm. Mm. because he said like how like the song he used is brown eyed girl i think and he's like how well mm. do you actually know brown eyed girl right like he he's like you probably can play the chords mm. and you can say like oh i know how to play brown eyed girl right and he play the chords and it's like oh yeah that's what most people probably feel like they can do but he's like do you know this mm. picking part do you know this harmony part do you know this you know like so mm. there's and 
even in beginner songs, there's so much depth for you to go farther, right? So yeah, like even if you yeah. look at something and it has the ty- the you know the thing on it that says, "Oh, this is for beginner or whatever," don't feel like I'm an intermediate player. I don't need this. Like it doesn't hurt to check it out and see. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, there there's something here for me. I can at least practice my improvising, or I can practice my soloing, or something. There definitely is like everything for every player, no matter what level they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I could tell a story, like uh, yesterday, Aaron and I um, filmed for a future lesson. I don't know if it's next month or the month after, but um, it it was kind of cool because it's a song that I know very well and I play all the time. And we, you know, we decided to make a monthly lesson out of it. And it's one of those things that like. I have evolved as a player and I've kind of found myself to, uh, you know, to, to have my own style. But then um, I was revisiting the song and trying to, you know, trying to record it, trying to do the lesson and stuff and break it down. And it's just like, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to revert to this player's style in order to get this down correctly. You know, like, um, to so make it sound yeah, like to it. make it sound like it sound right sound, you know, and, and it's uh, just the technique. It just doesn't sound right. And it, the execution kind of, um, it sounds weird. Like if, if, you, if I were to try it, like how I would normally play. Um, so just revisiting that and I'm like, man, I, I, you know, it, I should look at this a little bit more because there's something to playing with, you know, with, with this style. So no matter like, you know, how, uh, you know, how, how good you think you are, like there's always something about like going back to your roots and, and trying to figure out some stuff, just like, you know, the analogy that we see here every, you know, every now and then, you know, I, I, my belt has been super dirty for a long time. It's time for, to, for me to wash my belt <laughs> and, um, you know, back, back to white, back to white belt and just like put some hard work back there again. And, um, it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. I wish I could talk more about it, but I don't want to spoil, uh, I don't want to spoil any, you know, surprises, <laughs> uh, but it's really cool. It's something that kind of got me connected to like, uh, you know, my, my, my old, um my old self that like was super excited to learn you know such pickings and and, and uh and it's really 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 cool because i listened back to it and i'm like man this sounds just like the cd like i can play it just like the cd now you know like i was excited like for you know for the first time in a while i'm like ah, i can't believe like i can do that you know like i just i don't know like um it, to be honest sometimes it just feels kind of jaded it's like oh, okay well this is the pattern like this is the picking pattern i just play mm-hmm. the picky pattern but that is just like it took me back to like man that sounds if if i listen to cd that it's fast part more. just oh yeah. man like i can't believe i can play like this now you know like just revisiting like like that song 20 30 years you know like after uh after learning it for the first time it kind of like i don't know it, it shed some light onto like what my current style is lacking and what my current style is actually you know um is is good for like there's some things that my current style can do really well but there's some things that that style doesn't work for so i know i'm being super like um ambiguous with with stuff but uh, <laughs> once it comes out you'll know exactly what i'm talking about once this um because we don't know if it's next month in the month afterward but you know, once that song comes out, you know what I'm, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. That like it's kind of going back to my roots, and it's really cool. It's really cool to wash your, you know, wash your belts. They got mm-hmm. so dirty, and um, yeah. Even though I consider myself uh, an advanced player, there's always something new for me to learn, and there's always something new for me to tackle. So you know, it, it's it's kind of weird, like seeing a a beginner, kind of intermediate beginner, saying like. I don't I don't know what to you know I don't know what to do and I'm just not getting any better was or you know like I I don't know what else you know what else I should learn or whatnot but you know if you really think about it if you if you just like took a look there is a billion things that you could you know that you could learn that you could work on that you can do with your you know with your ukulele so even you know after uh 30 plus years or maybe not 30 almost 30 years almost 30 years like let's just say 25 plus years of playing the ukulele <laughs> there's always something that i'm discovering which speaking of which okay did you guys see today friggin jake shimabukuro is on is on a master, master class. class you know the master class with like gordon oh, ramsay yeah? and whatever wow. he has his own master class i was like i was so proud and i was like i i, I showed my wife I'm like look it's jake on master class he's a master he's my friend <laughs> <laughs> i was like i know that guy he taught me you know like 
it was really it was really cool yeah he has a he has a master class out so if you guys have master class if you guys are already like subscribed to that and stuff check out his master class i don't i yeah. haven't seen it you know i don't i, I don't have that kind of luxury <laughs> like you know to have something <laughs> like that but really that was that was really cool you know just to yeah. just to see someone i idolized like since you know since i was young to like to to make it to now i mean he's always made it in the big leagues but he's like like the master <laughs> I, of masters there's uh, like really great guys on that you know on that site yeah i think if you go to his class then the next suggested class mm. is like a guitar class by santana right so it's like yeah yeah <laughs> that, that's who <laughs> jake yeah, good is company hanging there. out with yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. what <laughs> yeah we got uh, a good company here too we got we got me and we got Craig Chi. You know, he's he's good, right? <laughs> People still like Craig. <laughs> and uh, you know who else? Well, we have Bruce Shimabukuro yeah. on, uh, <laughs> on our master class. Just as good. <laughs> yeah. Just as just as good. I love Bruce. <laughs> his, his class is actually if you guys great. Don't follow, yeah. yeah, if you guys don't follow Bruce on Facebook, he's hilarious. Like he uh, <laughs> he, he put out a video on uh on how to cook steak with his son and stuff and he's like i guess he's never cooked steak with like lots of butter before <laughs> he's oh. like he's like here we go i heard you know i heard this much butter cures coronavirus so we're gonna try it <laughs> like, he's hilarious i love that guy he's so funny so yeah. he, he keeps putting out videos um and uh just like uh, last week we were talking about renee and uh and that um and that app which which she uses Acapella. you know like mm -hmm. where, where she does that yeah, acapella. He's been he's been on that acapella app. He's been like making um, uh, making videos by. So he made like a rap video, <laughs> like with, that, with this, like an ukulele rap video. It's awesome. Check him out on Facebook. He's great. He's hilarious. <laughs> See, just as good. Bruce Chibukuro on our masterclass on ukulele on the ground. Check that mm -hmm. out. <laughs> yeah, we should do like a masterclass like commercial with Bruce. <laughs> 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 oh, that was a fun shoot too that was yeah he's so good and shoot. you know the the whole point to yourself and point to the ground thing bruce that's bruce of curl that's like <laughs> you know what i mean like that guy's the man like i um he's kind of underrated as far as you know like uh as a teacher but he's actually one of the best um teachers that like people like ukulele players like myself will tell you that like bruce is actually a, a you know a great teacher he mm -hmm. started um i believe it was ukulele ink or ukulele essence or whatever it's called yeah. like with with jake when uh, when pure heart um or uh maybe not uh, cologne his, his second band when that thing kind of you know uh closed down or, or closes chapters him and bruce um put together an ukulele school and uh, but then of course Jake got a little too busy and Bruce kind of kept the school going and um, so he's you know he's way more experienced than all of us as far as ukulele teaching he's great but if you guys want to check him out check out his master class at uh, at ukulele on the ground he's he's great I think that's another so, one anyway of... uh, do you, you have another well I was gonna say I think that's another one of those classes what? that people might overlook because it's like labeled as beginner right but it. it teaches mm -hmm. some of the stuff that like even intermediate and advanced players who come to you know who do mm -hmm. student reviews and stuff we, yeah. we tell them like oh be wary mm -hmm. of your tone like look at how you're actually picking it and in that class bruce talks about yeah. that kind of stuff so it you know it's worth it to check out even if you think you're yeah. you, you're not a beginner yeah yeah he's a great player but he's actually a better teacher than he is a player not not saying that he's you know he can't play well or whatever. He's a great player. He's made some amazing instrumentals and stuff. But uh, he's he's an ever he, he's an even better teacher. He's yeah. and even Jake will tell you that that like that Jake is not the teacher. Bruce is the teacher. <laughs> but you know Jake is. <laughs> if you have master class, them anyway. Yeah. If you have a subscription to master class, might as well check out Jake's master class rate right, too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he des you know he deserves to be like in, in that uh, like top tier kind of you know like uh, amongst like legends like Carlos Santana and Gordon Ramsay and Annie Leibovitz you know mm -hmm. like all those guys that teach in that on that site it's amazing so I was very proud of my friend and mentor I was like man that's this guy's made it look at this guy look at him smiling for that masterclass <laughs> video <laughs> so good proud of that guy yeah. And then he's another one too, where he he washes his belt often. Yeah, often, you know, very often. Yeah, he's so, always every time that we meet up with him, he's always working on something mm -hmm, else or mm -hmm, like trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to do something different. 
and mm -hmm. and new like you know he keeps yeah. his ukulele playing new for yeah. himself all the time so he keeps innovating yeah. and you would think that like being at that you know at that level you're like oh i can just coast and he could yeah, take he, a breather <laughs> yeah, he, just, he could have just coasted you know what i mean like people seem to like my stuff i'm just gonna keep uh -huh. doing this stuff i'm just gonna strum very heavy and uh, you know like make arrangements of these uh you know these songs and i think i just would coast but no like he's constantly innovating you know he did that um uh that kind of symphony for ukulele or whatever with uh dr yasui with like the hawaii uh, hawaii symphony like that's mm -hmm. it's amazing like how you can play like a 45 minute song you know like just 45 <laughs> minute song you know that's that's crazy and it's not like the song is just a bunch of chords or whatever it's like a highly technical song like 45 minutes that's some crazy endurance like i couldn't do that i couldn't even do 15 <laughs> minutes i don't think you know uh -huh. that's uh it's uh because it, it's just him yeah that's a video that I was linked that... to for Campanella too, right? Because they that's mm. what they talk about in yeah. like the behind the scenes videos. They talk about how it started using Campanella techniques that Jake really has to think how to play these notes differently, right? Mm. Yeah. So. It, yeah. It, I, I yeah. think that... so. I'm like, it, it's not like. Oh, go ahead. Oh no no! If if we <laughs> ever get like uh even like other players like Abe, I think there you can tell that. They're mm -hmm. always hungry. They're not like they're not saying like, oh, I'm pretty good. I'm gonna stop at this. It's like, well, even mm -hmm. hanging out with yeah. them, it's like, hanging out with them. It sounds stupid, but he had the automaton and he was figuring out how to play yeah. songs on the automaton. And it's like, why? <laughs> that thing is a toy. Like you, you can't really play it, right? Yeah. But he was getting good at it. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so you you can tell like these guys. They just like. It's not stopping, right? Like they just like, even though they're yeah. some of the best, they're they're not gonna let that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I have the title belt, I can stop now. It's like, nope, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and uh, I was just I was just gonna add to the um to to the Jake and the symphony thing. You know, like it's uh, it's it's an in he talked about it in that video how it's like an endurance thing. You know, like. And I, I really thought about it. I was like, you know, the the longest song that that I think I have might be like Europa, which is like clocks in at maybe five minutes. Like depends if I had enough, you know, if I had coffee that day or not. <laughs> it would be like seven minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I and that after you know you just feel so like exhausted by like how much like phrasing, you know, how, you know, like how much phrasing you have to think about and how much technique you have to put in there and. To be able to do that for forty, you know, for forty-five minutes. Although you know he does have the symphony backing him up, it's just him as a you know solo ukulele player being accompanied by you know by by the symphony. So the symphony is not going to take over the melody line. It's all his. So all that stuff, it's it's mind-boggling just to just like think about it because it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that one man can do that. But yeah, he he did, and I heard it was awesome. But mm -hmm. you kind of one of those things that you have to be there live in order to experience it because it's ah, missed out on that one. But that's <laughs> that's quite historic, you know. So as a as a new Kalala player, we're all you know. I'm always trying to strive for uh, for excellence because guys like that exist. Like we nobody can rest on their laurels if Jake is not resting on his laurels. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody's always reaching for to. more. Exactly, you yeah. know. So if he's not doing it, nobody else should do it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. So, uh, do, speaking of uh, speaking of which, we do have um, some student reviews from people. Uh, speaking of people that want to get better, and uh, you know, so Kahai, give us a rundown on our student reviews today. Uh, yeah, we have one. Uh, we have one again from Wesley, and he sent in this song before, mm -hmm. I think. But I guess he just wanted a update mm -hmm. take on what he can do to improve it, and it's like a. Bach piece, yeah. but then it's more, it's probably more well known as American Tune by Paul Simon. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have one from Lori. Okay, so, where Wesley, she's, you... she's doing Hound Dog. So, yeah. Yeah, by Elvis Presley. Yeah. So, Wesley, you already know what we're going to say. You know, like, uh, <laughs> you already know what we're going to say. So, um, a lot of those melody lines are coming from, you know, from your A string and your in your E string. And it's just coming out weak, buddy. Like, I, I don't know what else what else to say. And it's because, you know, like, uh, you, you know, you want to use these these four fingers and I get it. And that, you know, that makes sense with like classical players and whatnot. But as far as ukulele, like if the melody line is there, you're not, you know, 
um, you don't really want to designate like a pretty you know like weak finger to to play those lines and uh, you know if you want to play more dynamically with more expression like you need to have a good control of uh you know of of those melody line notes so you know and um and anchoring <laughs> that's another thing that you know that, that we're gonna say and we've kind of you know we've, we've seen a bunch of your videos you know um already at you know at this point and it's is pretty much the same you know the same advice you want to anchor your fingers because as you as you pluck them i'm seeing your you know i'm seeing your hand kind of have this movement of just moving up and down if you just like kind of uh anchored it it would stay still you know like it would be a lot more accurate um you could you know because it's not floating you could um uh you determine how hard to hit the string so even if you still you know like um uh, you, you still insist on on using your ring finger there because I, I mean i'm you know i'm not gonna tell somebody like how to how to play their songs or whatever but like if you still insist on doing so if you plant your pinky there at least like your uh, your ring finger will you know will will be braced down here and you can hit it you know harder if you need to hit it harder but if just if it's just up in the air there's really little to no control over you know over that so i mean there if you know if you're a super duper advanced player then yes like control will be there you know as, as far as that goes but um as like right now just kind of from seeing it um i would love to hear those uh, you know to hear those melody line notes come out a lot more therefore either like uh anchor it down so you have more strength on that you know on that ring finger to uh you know to hit those melody line notes or you know like or just kind of use these you know these three because these three really is all you need i know you have a low g and stuff but even you know even a low g i you know i, I play my low g all the time i still use these three so um other than that you know it was it was okay you know like um the the dynamic expression definitely will uh you know will change if you work on the control it sounds better i mean you know you are getting better that, that's that's one thing that i can you know that i can say um you have been making improvements you know from uh from from your first videos from the first ones that we've seen but if you want to make you know like lasting changes to uh to, to your playing you have to approach it in a different way yeah i think okay. what do you guys think <laughs> I uh so I watched his video and then I tapped yeah. out his BPM and yeah. I you know I I checked I listened to Paul Simon play it and I mm. tried to find the original song by Bach and all these other mm -hmm. things and the original song by Bach it's kind of it's a church song or it's like a choir song so mm -hmm. it doesn't really have like a steady BPM but mm -hmm. Paul Simon's one which it, it like he's kind of going for like with the finger picking and everything right like it's slow it's slower than what he's playing at like yeah wesley's playing at like 100 bpm and i think mm. paul simon plays that song at in the album he plays it at 85 and then in live mm. he plays it even slower at 75 mm -hmm. and i th i think that might help wesley is if he slows yeah. it down because right yeah. now the the melody notes that he plays they don't mm. really breathe like they, he yeah, plays it, yeah. and then another note comes up right behind it, mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember what music teacher told me this, but I remember a music teacher telling me that if you speed up a slow song, it sounds like you're just playing it to get it over with. It doesn't sound mm -hmm. like you're actually enjoying the song, and I think mm -hmm. that kind of comes through with Wesley's playing too. It's like it mm -hmm. sounds like he's rushing to get through to the end of the song. Not like mm. he's actually taking the time and thinking about the mm. note, like trying to be present in what he's actually playing, yeah. right? So that just that just might be something you might want to think about, Wesley. Is like you don't have to rush it. Let let the notes breathe, and mm -hmm. take it slower. I think if you take it slower, that song benefits mm -hmm. from that. Benefits from being slower rather than speeding through it. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron. Uh yeah. Uh, one one thing that I kind of noticed was um, his when he gets to the strumming part, it still kind of seems like his hand is moving this way instead of twisting. Uh, so so it's it, something that we commented on before yeah. for for his stuff. But yeah, just kind of work on that, being more loose with your with the wrist, just mm -hmm. so that it can kind of 
go naturally in mm-hmm. into the strum, and mm-hmm. then you can you can brace and then get to your get to mm-hmm. your finger picking. Go from the the really loose strum to the finger picking, and then back to the strum if you need to. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, instead of kind of like making your wrist like this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because that that can kind of end up hurting your wrist mm-hmm. if you do that. Uh, but you know his once he kind of goes back to like a a lighter strum it seems like he's doing it so mm-hmm. just when he goes into the heavy strums just instead of going up and down just do yeah. more of a twisting motion yeah yeah instead so, of a high hello like a normal yeah. person you do high hello like a miss america <laughs> <laughs> like the queen <laughs> yeah like the queen that's what we said before right uh, yeah. this instead of this <laughs> yeah yeah. Try uh try do it again because the we didn't see oh. when you're doing the queen wave. It's it's <laughs> this. It's not. I mean, it's not this. It's this. So it's yeah. like a twist of the wrist, you know. Like so, if I were to like let my uh let my wrist just like kind of you know fall like like loose and stuff, and if I'm trying to do that same like twist from the the queen's wave, you know, it looks like this. <laughs> I think. And I think you <laughs> use that to get all that fast drumming. It doesn't even have to be fast. It's just good and accurate. <laughs> I think even if he does a twist too, that'll help rhythmically with the song. Because I think when he does the kind of the side to side, he's doing kind of like a claw hammer motion or like technique or pattern. And it comes out sounding like triplets. But that song doesn't, if you listen to Paul Simon play that song, it doesn't really have triplets. It has it's a A B mm. pattern where he's wow. picking with his thumb and then he's picking with his other fingers. So it's supposed to be A B A B A B mm. instead of triple it, triple it, triple it, oh. you know. Mm, so it, yeah. like when I hear him play with that that claw hammer technique, I kind of feel like uh it doesn't I know he's a fan, but I don't think it it might not necessarily fit with that song, yeah. you know. So yeah. Okay. So um let's move over to Lori. So Lori did uh, a cover of Hound Dog, which um, you know she showed me during our uh, our private lesson earlier this week. So good job on that, Lori. I love I loved seeing it again. Uh, a few things that you know that I will say. Uh, some of the chord changes um, seem a little bit you know a little bit muffled, but everything else was was uh, was was fine. Um, take Aaron's advice from earlier, where like you're just kind of you know like practice just put putting your left hand over and just kind of do down strums and just kind of do this and just lift up and making sure that you're you know and then do down up down up down up and then just kind of landing like that because um you seem to you know to have the chords and and and, and stuff uh in there but just switching uh switching chords and having that you know sync up with the right hand like that's you know that's something that you can work on also um you know although i see the you know the the, the wrist twisting um, try to see if you can loosen up the fingers as well because your fingers you know seem to be doing this and you're trying to strum and that kind of you know gets uh, gets in the way it muffles the strings as you try to do it, like a down up strum because if I were to do that now like just trying to do one of these like if I just put it like this like a bear claw you know it, it, that's that's what we're kind of getting so loosen up the you know loosen up the fingers so that they're not like getting in the way and just kind of do the whole point yourself point to the ground Bruce and Bukoro thing. And that's how you'll just get the pointer finger, but still get the twist of the wrist. You know, even if even if you curl it up and stuff, if you kind of use the pointer finger and separate that from the rest of the fingers, those fingers won't get in the way. But if you have them kind of connected like this, like how you did, that's how you're getting that kind of, you know, um, not as clean sound. Yeah. Kahai? Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, <laughs> beginners hate this. Uh, it's, it's a bad advice as like somebody giving advice it's mm-hmm. not really the most helpful i because i know like it's hard for beginners but mm-hmm. uh don't look at your left hand like if you have to play in, a, in front of a mirror because you're tilting the ukulele up right and yeah. i think that's also affecting her angle of attack when mm-hmm. she's strumming so if she keeps it more flat against her it it should be better but yeah that's a hard mm-hmm. thing like as a beginner you want to look at your left hand and you want to make sure you're fingers are all going in the right place but if you have to do that try and play in front of a mirror because it'll probably give you better habit or it'll make it a better habit so you're playing flat instead of turning your ukulele 
Like a yeah. Mr. Advanced player telling people not to look at their left. Maybe somebody <laughs> needs to wash their belts. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I really shouldn't say that when I have my, my ukulele turned completely towards me. And I, uh, yeah. No, that's great yeah. advice. That's actually great advice. I didn't even think of that. Good job. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's really true because when yeah. you're looking down at your ukulele, mm-hmm. you don't really see anything. Like if you're holding mm-hmm. it correctly, you don't you see like the side profile of it mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so you don't even see the frets mm-hmm. so it's it is really tough to mm-hmm. kind of get that like you know you just got to do it by feel if you can and so aldrin mm-hmm. has talked about like when he was he was um really kind of grinding and wood shedding he <laughs> like <laughs> he, he would play in the yeah mm-hmm. he would play in the dark and or like lying on the ground mm-hmm. and playing in the dark and so so yeah, if you don't need, if you can do it by feel, that's even better. Yeah. But um, you know, when you're starting off, you have to look at where you're putting your fingers. Yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, it's one of those things that you kind of try and work up to, um, mm-hmm. when you can. So I, I remember like learning piano and having my piano teacher tell me not to look at my fingers, and you know, like they say, like oh, because no professional piano pianists look at their fingers. If you look at pre- professional pianists, they look at their fingers all the time. And <laughs> same thing for ukulele yeah. players, right? If you look at professional <laughs> ukulele players, they're looking at their hand all the time. But what we don't want you to do is to change your posture from trying yeah. to look at where yeah. your your hands are supposed to be. So that's yeah. that's really what we're telling you is try to keep yeah. your posture where the ukulele is flat against yourself and that you're not tilting it up. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually thinking about that too. I think people who have um, prior experience with piano, um, kind of going back to syncing your hands, mm. that um, that is really helpful because mm. you're you're usually doing bass notes on your left hand and then playing melodies on your right hand, and so it's kind of like da 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 and so it's kind of like you know that that thing where you're syncing and you're doing doing more things with this hand for the for your strumming and then you're doing this on like certain beats you know so that's kind of how it is when you're switching chords and then um yeah then moving to different positions and doing something so so yeah i i i feel like a lot of um so sometimes a lot of kids that get really good at ukulele quick quicker they probably have a little bit of you know piano background yeah at least some kind of music yeah. background that helps you separate your brain but if you don't have that background all you got to do is just work on that stuff mm-hmm. and or have and a lego should, background <laughs> you should yeah kind of yeah <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's, a, that's a very a specific reference <laughs> To a very specific kid <laughs> in a very specific place in Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but yeah. So um, if you don't have a musical background with other instruments, then just working on that kind of thing. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your your stomach at the same time. Mm-hmm. You just gotta. It, if you work at it, you should be able to get it pretty quickly. And mm-hmm. then all of it's just practicing after that. Mm-hmm. I think um, one of the one of the things about you know because we're talking about washing like belts and stuff. One of the things that I did to wash you know the belt is uh, last year was it last year or this year? I bought a uh, I bought a piano like um, just just a electric electric piano, um, not expensive, but um, yeah, just kind of learning that thing is uh, helping me out with timing, like because uh, the 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 chord has to be there on beat one, you know, like, like how Aaron said, like, it's like this, then bass, bass, then this, then we, whatever. And it's, it's tough for me to sing. Cause I have these lines, you know, that, that I'm, that I'm singing. And then like it, the, the hands and the keyboard kind of has to make sense. And it's kind of cool because I can, I can see the whole, you know, like all the notes kind of laid out in front of me. Like I've never, although on ukulele, all the notes are right there and stuff, but then you kind of have to, 
you know, like make your make your fingers go like a certain way in order to do that. But with the piano, you just hit it, you know, like it was really nice. Like that's one of the things that I did to wash my belt either this or last year. But it's just it was very good. I, I got to like take up an ukulele course or not ukulele, but a piano course or something. I, I do want to get better at it because I feel like it's made me a, a better ukulele player. Like just taking up a different instrument like the piano. <laughs> yeah. Can we do one more question? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, oh yeah. Do you want to ask the question, Aaron? Oh no, go ahead. Uh, so the question is from Bob, right? This is yeah. the one you're talking about, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob said, "How much time should a newer player spend between theory and actual playing?" Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a beginner player, if you're playing for the very first time, if you're picking up the Google of it for the very first time. Um, I wouldn't worry about theory too much. You know what I mean? Like theory is kind of like um, I, I I always make this comparison like of uh, of reading a book on how to swim. You know, like if uh, it's best to just go out there and go in the water and try to swim and stuff instead of like, huh? So that's how you swim. You know, like you can read as much as you want about it, but unless you go out there and actually like try it out. Um, it, you know, it's, it doesn't, uh, you don't really need it, you know, uh, unless you've, you've experienced kind of going out and swimming. So with that said, um, you know, uh, until you've, you know, you've put in like a bunch of work, like, you know, just like maybe a good, like few months or up to a year, you know, playing the ukulele. And then you start to kind of, you know, you start to notice things. You're like, huh, how come G and C are almost always together with D? You know, like, why? I wonder why. Or if uh, this picking has the same kind of notes as this other song that I know, you know, and like once you start kind of asking those questions to yourself, that's when you should um check out music theory and just try to like answer uh, you know answer whatever question you may have and that leads to more questions you know like and like well if that's that then how come this or like why is this you know why is this a g and where's the other g or the high g or whatever it may be once you start running into those that's when you and that's when you do theory but you know as a beginner player you kind of just want to start playing and that's you know when, when you'll see that because you know going back to swimming is just like you know, you start swimming like, oh, maybe if I swim like this, it, you know, like I go faster. I notice I float better if I do this or whatever. And then you go back to that book like, huh, see, it says in the book, if I do this, I'll float better. But at least, you know, you 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 know what, you know, what, what that's talking about. Because if you just read it and you're like, huh, I guess, you know, like that's, I guess that's how you do that. <laughs> it's kind of like if I read like, you know, a book about running like with, uh, with, with Aaron and then I go with him like, yeah, I can do this. Like I, I read all the books about it, Aaron. Let's go out on a, you know, on a marathon. Let's do a marathon. Like I, I read up about it. I think I'm prepared. I'm good to go, man. And then, you know, like I'm, I'm there like not even 15 minutes in and I'm winded. <laughs> it's just like, what? the book said it was so easy you know but like that's really what it is but if you know if you're already interested in it so if you put in you know a, a few months and you're like and you start to ask those questions um i would check out you know like uh beginner music theory and that's just you know like major minor you know minor scales with some chords and um and your chord families like stuff that we have here in ukulele on the gown is considered beginner music theory if you um you know if you just watch the music theory course it doesn't take that long but you could probably like check that out in like i don't know for some people like a week to a month or whatever but that should answer a lot of your ukulele related music theory questions and if you want to go further than that there's a bunch of books you know that, that you can check out but as far as how much time to dedicate um i you know in a typical 30 minute practice i would dedicate maybe five minutes to music theory uh, maybe 10 I, minutes if you're you're practicing actual scales and stuff i think the the problem we see and why we don't suggest like oh are you brand new to the ukulele go to the music theory that it'll be great the reason why we don't <laughs> tell people that is because when beginners learn theory, there's a problem where they think that Too theory, much. well, no, they think that theory is rules, rules mm. and guidelines, and that they have to stick to it. And if a song or something doesn't stick to it, then it's wrong or mm. it's not part of theory or, you know, they it makes it harder for them. And like, you know, if you think that way, it's like you won't be exposed mm. to you know you won't be exposed to songs like from the beatles where 
some of the theory there it's like it makes sense if you look really deep into it but if you just use the basic music theory of like oh these are the chords in the chord family that you can use you'll be like yeah why are they using that chord that's not a chord <laughs> they can use <laughs> or even for like our, our our song challenge right like a major mm-hmm. second there shouldn't be a major second in the chord family like you know like oh how do you use that it's like well you just turn the second chord into a major that's that's all you got to do, you know, like, don't make it too complicated. I think that's yeah. where it's like people get into trouble is like they think like I got to follow these rules and mm-hmm. these rules will lead me to be a better player. Music theory didn't come first. Music came first and theory just helps to understand it and yeah. explain it. So mm-hmm. never think that theory is a hard set rule. Yeah. If if I close my eyes, it's it's like Mike Odo is here. You know, like when when, <laughs> when you were just talking just now, it's like, oh, tell me more, Mike. Yeah, that's yeah. how good you sounded. God, yeah. you sounded awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's just like one of those things that I get yeah. so sad when people, yeah. you know, they come up and they're like, oh, but what about this? This that's yes. not a part of of the 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 chord theory, or that's not a part yeah. of the chord family. And it's like, well, no, but it sounds good so why not yeah. <laughs> if yeah, it's the sound- artist who wrote it <laughs> s- thought it sounded good so yeah, yeah. the most yeah, important to- uh, the Go most ahead. important part of, of music right is that mm-hmm. you're communicating your feelings so mm-hmm. if it sounds good to you and it's communicating what you want to explain mm-hmm. or express your you know then that's yeah. fine it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong in theory at all so mm-hmm. yeah don't let mm-hmm. that stop you that's how you know new genres of music are created. Like blues wouldn't be created if people follow the rules, you know. But I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna add that like you know we get tons and tons of like questions and emails about like uh, with, with with beginners trying to ask us like all these like heavy music theory questions where like you know it doesn't really pertain to whatever they're they're practicing or it's like kind of just gonna you know like um it's just gonna whoosh you know like over their heads anyway even if we did you know explain it like it would just be better if you just kind of like okay well you know work on this work on this tune like for example be your two or three songs that week you know like now that we can kind of now that we're almost over we're gonna tie it up in a nice little package yeah so instead of like like oh but you know but this is in this whatever key of of that like sometimes people overthink it and we get a lot of you know a lot of people uh, beginners especially who you know who check out music theory and overthink things and just like if you just play it you'll have way more fun because it seems like a lot of uh, a lot of the beginners are stressing out because they've tackled theory too yeah. early yeah. I think one, how many one of those the... emails do you get, guy? Like, just uh, you know, people asking uh, music theory stuff that like, what? I thought you started like a month ago, you know? Yeah, <laughs> not not as much recently, but I, I've definitely yeah. gotten it. Like, one thing that we get yeah. is like, oh, are you sure that it's a? Oh, shouldn't it be a B minor chord instead of a B minor seven? <laughs> or shouldn't it like? Yeah. Oh, um, you said that this is a B minor seven chord, but really it should be a D, right? Uh, and, and that kind of thing, it's like, yeah, it's important, but if you, if I play the chord and you can't hear the difference, then that doesn't seem that important to you, right? Like yeah. you're, I think as a beginner, what you really want to build is your, your muscles, your ability to play and your ear. Like, are you able to hear the difference between all these things that they say in music theory? If you are, then yeah, it's like, then it'll start to make sense then you can actually get into it and i think applying music theory is what you should work towards but most people some people are just like oh i just want to know music theory (laughs) it's like "Eh, i don't know if that really helps you know yeah yeah all right so with that said um next week we're going to have our songs due um if you guys want to participate in the song challenge it is on the uu plus forums uh thank you so much for checking this out thank you for listening to this podcast watching this podcast uh we do have the uh you know the links the show links below if you guys are checking this out at ukulele underground but we'll have the show links so you guys can you know check out all the stuff that we were talking about if you didn't catch any of the references that we were referring to fang <laughs> so uh <laughs> <laughs> see you guys next time have a great one uh stick around for one-on-one coaching and uh we'll see you folks tomorrow for a little friday live jam before i go um i just want to say um i will be 
playing a show on Instagram next Friday. I want to start like saying this now so that people can mark their calendars. It is going to be 6 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So I know it's kind of late for a lot of you folks, but it is a Hawaii. It is, it's a local show. So it's going to be kind of late. 6 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Um, follow the Instagram account um, of Hawaii State Art, Acad uh, Art Museum. Hawaii State Art Museum or HISIM. H-I-S-A-M. So look for Heisem. Um, and there have been a bunch of people that, that have uh, that have been featured on that Instagram. It's just, you know, they're they're basically just playing music and uh, and and just giving some uh, some cool like you know some cool entertainment because it's not just music they've done like people who draw, who make art and whatnot, just art related stuff. Um, but we, we've had our friends Evan McKay and, uh, and Kaylana that we featured here on Ukulele Underground. Uh, they've done sets for that, so you can go check out their Instagram and watch those sets if you want to. But I'll be doing a set next Friday, August 28th, 6 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time on Instagram. So check it out, Heisem on Instagram, Heisem Live on Instagram next Friday. See you folks next time. Have a great one. Aloha.